Today, we are going to go over a lot of the tech stocks that have been going wild for the last couple of days. Also, I know that there's this new DJT that I'm sure everybody wants to look at to day trade. So we're going to go and look at that. So let's get into a couple of things here. Let me get my screen share going for you guys and we will get rolling. All right, let's see. Let's start here. Did this launch this morning? It did. Let's see here. Oh, this is not the ticker I wanted to look at. Well, this one actually looks pretty interesting anyway, so I'm going to take a look at it. Um, pretty interesting morning we have rolling for us right now with this. Um, uh, let's see. Look at this candle. We have, well, besides the price, you got to spend $16,000. This is quite the run that it's going on right now. Um, this is a Dow Jones Transport Index. Something that I just made a recent video about was Costco. And I didn't talk about it going short, but I'm talking about it now because it's quite the interesting play. Look at what we have here. We have something rare with Costco. We have something breaking down into the sweet spot. Now, I would probably want to break this level right here, and I'll figure out what that level is in a second. But I also want to point something else out. And when I circled this, I said something rare with Costco. Look what can happen with Costco. It's such a powerful stock that it drops below, moves into the sweet spot, then it just reverts on you and goes right back up. Even back here, this was in September, drops below, moves into the sweet spot, looks good, rallies right back up. So you need some type of real confidence that this thing is going to push down. So let's see when this was in here. We broke down. We didn't really, there was no, there was no sell signal in here, right? Let's go over here. This was not a sell signal. Why? You weren't in the sweet spot for three days with the red and yellow line, okay? Um, there was no sell signals in here. There was never a sell signal. So this is what you wanna see here. If you wanna take advantage of Costco, you basically need to have something like this. I'm just gonna draw these and then boom, something as big as that. With the, the red and yellow lines being in the sweet spot, preferably with a lot of volume, you'll probably get a lot of volume if you get something like that. Caveat though, you might not get a lot of volume. Why? Because it's Costco and there's just not gonna be a lot of sellers in that direction. There's gonna be a lot of people taking profits, but there's not gonna be a lot of people selling short to move this thing down like you had in here. The only thing that you really had here was earnings and the earnings were positive if you look at the green indicator right there. So this is gonna be a tough one, but I'm just, just showing everybody that it is setting okay. All right. Uh, good morning, Jamie, JT. What's up, guys? All right. Let's get into some more. Um, tell me what else you want to see. But I want to go to NVIDIA. Oops, NVDA. I want to look at some tech. So what am I noticing on video, NVIDIA and why did I want to pull this up this morning? Well, there's an ugly face pattern. Look what we have here. Boom, boom. And there's your ugly face. What does an ugly face typically mean? typically means you're going to break down like this. Now, with that being said, NVIDIA is not only NVIDIA, but to me right now, NVIDIA is the stock market. It is more of the stock market right now than Apple is. Whatever NVIDIA does, the S&P 500, the QQQ does. I don't know how that trend is going to change. Earnings are probably not going to be bad on this thing ever. <laughs> that doesn't seem... But if you want to break below this level and follow these dots that I drew down, you're going to need some serious selling volume. I would not tell anybody to short this thing. The, the reason that I'm telling you about this ugly face pattern is such. Let's draw on the ugly face one more time. There's the ugly face. This will probably break down and might waver in here a little bit, but it'll probably come back up. And when it hits this base right here, after trickling down like that, I want people to look at this to go long, to run this thing back up, because I do think that if we have a lot of power, we can actually break through this, this uh, double top, which is the start of the ugly face, and push through. That is what I'm seeing with NVIDIA. That's why I want you to take advantage of NVIDIA. Even more so than on a long-term chart, I'd probably come over here and do something with it over here. You can actually swing this down if you wanted to. Now wait for this to roll over, Wait for a rollover to occur like that, and this moves down into the sweet spot. And then that, when you get those dots that I just drew like that, these dots that are right here are gonna be this, this move down through the sweet spot. 
So take advantage of NVIDIA if you can in that regard, but make sure guys that you are not getting caught with these things because I really don't want, I don't want people getting caught in these things for the reason of, I don't want to say ignorance, it's probably the wrong word, but just not paying attention or thinking that I can, I can do something more than, uh, more than I'm capable of. That's kind of what I don't want people to do. I will say one thing. I absolutely hate the new trading view layout because it keeps moving, removing indicators for me out of nowhere and it's driving me absolutely crazy. But let's get into some of your questions today. Have you entered back into Zim on a short? So let's go over here, Zim on a short. I have. I have ent entered back into Zim on a short uh, last week. So let me go here and I am in Zim right now. Let's just pull up the long-term chart only. So I did, so when I entered Zim, again, I knew that this was gonna be some trouble and I actually entered it on this day right here. So I knew that it was gonna be some trouble and we're hitting that point and it's not really going anywhere. But with that being said, this is going to continue to fall. It is a very strong downtrend. All it needs to do is break this low, which is incredibly easy for Zim to do. Then it's gonna fill these two gaps. It's, it, it's gonna come down back to this kind of $6 range if not any lower. I'm not worried about Zim in any way, shape or form, but just know that when I went into this and I was actually, I think I mentioned it to Dalton when I did it, I actually said like, yeah, this is gonna, it's gonna give me, it's gonna give me a little bit of hell right here, but it's gonna get through it. I know that it's gonna get, I, and, and here, notice this, look where it's consolidating. Let me redraw this. Damn it, <laughs> sorry. Uh, right there and there. Look where it's consolidating. It's consolidating below. Notice it's consolidating below the support level. So it's not like it is um, consolidating up here above. It's consolidating below, meaning that it's more likely than not going to drop, especially with this. Uh, let's look at the volume. Oh, of course, we don't have volume because the thing changed on me. You know what I'm going to do? Just add this back real quick. <sighs> All right, what other questions do you guys have while I add this back to the chart real quick? Most shorted an Israel company. Okay, I didn't know that that was an Israeli company, but cool. That is pretty good. All right, yellow, middle band. I feel like I'm doing this every single show. 32, background, black. Inputs, 10, 3, 3, boom. Okay, we're going to roll with that for today. And then let's add some volume to that. All right. There we go. Will Apple break below 170? All right, let's see Apple. I don't think it will. Um, I'm just going to tell you that right now. There's too much support in here for Apple to break below that level. And I'm going to zoom out really far. Okay, so we're at 170. Now, could it drop below and hover there? Sure, but it's not going to stay below unless, unless everything falls apart. That's really what it is. When I say something like this is not going to drop below, I'm, I'm assuming that the market is going to stay in the same condition. Now, if everything falls, then yes, of course, Apple's going to fall. It's probably going to be a leader down because it's been a leader up. But with that being said, the way things are right now, it's not going to fall. And if you just look at this, 170, 170, you see you did drop below it a little bit, but 170, it consolidated. 170 was kind of your peak, your peak here, your consolidation, your consolidation, your consolidation, your trough right here, your consolidation. So you know how, excuse me, how strong 170 is or 171 is. I don't know what the exact number, but it's going to be very hard for Apple to drop below that and maintain that level. What day trading platforms do you use to execute trades? Um, uh, Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, basically the same thing right now. That's that's what I use. I think it's very efficient. Uh, you double clicked on that chart that removes indicators and pulls the chart to full screen. Oh, okay. Um, we entered the same day. Fantastic. So he's talking about the Zim trade. We entered the same day. All right. What else do you guys have? Let's look at some other, I wanna look at the airlines. So the airlines, 
are interesting right now because Boeing is a disaster and tires are falling off of Boeing planes and doors are flying off Boeing planes and it ain't good. All right, let's see. You're just consolidating here. This is American Airlines. You're consolidating. You're creating a wicked ugly face pattern right now. Wicked. Boom, boom, and boom. This thing will break down. It probably won't drop below $14. And I say that why? Consolidation, consolidation. Here you kind of had a gap. And then you had, it was just like continuously $14, $14, $14. Even back in here, the, the base of your head and shoulders pattern was $14. You consolidated here. You hit a trough. You hit a trough. You hit a trough. You hit a peak. You hit a big gap down. Even during, is this during uh, 2022? Yep. It just hit that consolidation channel. So $14 is a pretty strong level of support for American Airlines. You're not going to push through this. Same thing as Apple's not going to push through 170 or 171. You're not going to push to the downside here unless everything breaks down. All right, let's go to Delta. Delta Airlines. Oh, wow. Do they have Airbus or something? <laughs> You're gonna. You're not gonna go any further than this. You're at a fifty percenter. Here's your high. Here's your low. Your fifty percent is kind of. Oh, that was a terrible line. Your fifty percent is kind of here. This is going to break down. You, it's been very apparent that even when you do break up here, you can't get above this level. You just can't do it. You're you're at you're there again. It's gonna fall back down, and it'll fall to somewhere in this thirty nine forty range. It's not gonna. It's not gonna fall very far. A lot of these things right now in this market are consolidating, and that's the hard part about finding a long-term trade. Same exact thing with United Airlines. It's a, it's exactly the same. Is J.P. Morgan going to the moon or what? Uh, it has gone one day since. <laughs> let's see, J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan Chase. Wow. Yeah, this was an incredible run on J.P. Morgan. Um. Out of nowhere. So it was funny. I actually was short in here, I believe it was. I was short somewhere in here. And I didn't think it was going to do what it did because no other bank has done it. So I don't understand why this one is doing it. Especially with Jamie Dimon, who's the CEO who runs JP Morgan, is the one, he's probably the most bearish person I've ever seen on the economy uh, out of a position like that. But I was short in here, decided to exit my short, and then this thing has just boomed. It has just absolutely boomed. I don't know where this could end, but if you look at the long-term chart, if you're in this, can good job. Entered somewhere back in here, let this run, and you've just gone sideways. And as you go sideways, here's your kind of sideways movement. What happens? stock price goes up. And that, this is a video that I just made before we got live here. You're going to want to watch it. It's going to come out on, um, I think not this Sunday, but next Sunday, not this coming Sunday, but next Sunday. It's as you go sideways, the stock price just keeps going higher. And there is no reason to exit JP Morgan right now. No reason whatsoever. Yes, it's wavering, but that doesn't mean anything. This thing could just go like this and then just creep back up like that. And yeah, the stochastic will kind of waver and then it'll just get back to this close to 100% area. It, it's wild. That's what happens when rates are over 5% of their savings interest rate or 0.01% <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. All right. Good question about JP Morgan though. Be ready for some major swings if you are in one like Zim. Yeah, Zim is crazy. Zim is, Zim is one of my favorite stocks to trade because of the volatility. I mean, there's points of that thing where you can be up over 100% on it pretty quickly because the most ridiculous news drives that thing. It's actually quite funny to watch. So um, I implore you to, if you're a little bit more experienced and comfortable with volatility and want a pretty good long-term stock to trade, go look at a Zim, Zim Shipping. It's, it's Zim Integrated Shipping, I think is the actual name of it. So speaking of shipping, I know FedEx reported last week and they had a big move up and they're already creating an ugly face pattern and they have a big gap that they have to worry about. So dang. And not only that, but look at this. Um, look at this. 
where's my little marker? Here's your, you have an ugly face here, really ugly. And then you also have an ugly face here. Boom, boom, and boom. So three, like three little days, basically this week plus Friday. And you gotta worry about this gap. Ooh, now let's look at the volume real quick. Let's see what the volume has done. Yeah, the volume's completely fallen off. You can see that the volume has just completely fallen off. Um, if today ends below yesterday's average volume, you're gonna, you're not gonna be very happy because this thing is just gonna continue to con just fall and trickle back down. Um, let's get this, there we go. Get my average volume line up there. All right, PayPal. PayPal. All right, PayPal's starting to move. Let me see, ooh, good Lord. Could you imagine a company like, this This looks like a um, Rivian or, or something. I, this is crazy. This is an absolutely crazy chart for a really solid company like PayPal. But you see the current price and you see that green line going across the price and you can kind of tell that we're at a really strong resistance point. Notice here, where was our base, 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 all throughout here peak, peak. So you're kind of stuck right there. It's not going to go much higher than that current price, 67.50. But if you can, I if it was me, I would not look at trading this long term. I would bring this over to a swing trading chart and try to do something over here. And I'll, um, <coughs> excuse me. I would look at kind of coming back down here. <coughs> excuse me if we can get some movement, especially since the volume is beginning to fall. Carvana, CVNA. If I'm gonna guess, I'm probably gonna say I would swing trade this, but let's see. Um, yeah, actually it's really not a bad swing trade at all. Not at all. Now let me go to the long term. I'm imagining this is a little bit hard to trade. Eh, I'd probably swing trade it. If you get an engulfing candlestick today, you can probably do something. Just make sure that the volume continues because it is decelerating. It is absolutely decelerating. Mo, I got Mo got Intel from. Okay, I don't know what this means. Let's go to Intel because Intel reported something that China wasn't going to use Intel or AMD, so everything fell apart yesterday. <coughs> <coughs> so everything fell apart yesterday. Um, hold on one second here. All right, um, but it, re it rebounded right back up. You can see Intel fell, I think it was down like 5% at one point. It ended the day only down less than 2%. So honestly, what I would do is just pay attention here, take advantage of the stupidity and let this move up a little bit more. Maybe tomorrow, if tomorrow you get something like that, an engulfing candlestick, go at it. Why not? Why not? Imagine your cost basis if you're three hundred dollars a share. Yep, yeah, I mean, but there were there were people that were buying at three hundred that were like, "You're an idiot for not buying." Okay, sounds good. I don't know why. Well, that's what happens in markets. CCL earnings tomorrow. So CCL. We're, this is this is something that Steve was short on, if I remember correctly. CCL report. What are their earnings expected to be? Losing 17, I'll call it 18 cents a share, revenue of 5.42 billion. Wicked ugly face pattern. So Steve, if you're in this, I would I would implore you to, well, first of all, if you're short on this, you shouldn't be because your red line has crossed over yellow. This is moving. It's moving to the positive. If you're in this long, don't be because earnings are tomorrow. You have no idea what's gonna happen. You have absolutely no idea what's gonna happen. They could come out and say, we did zero dollars in revenue and we lost 30 cents a share, which is basically double of what they're expected to report. But we built a new ship and it's gonna be the coolest ship in the world and the stock price could go up 15% because people are dumb, <laughs> basically. And that is how earnings work. So 
be, or not even we built a new ship. We're going to build a new ship that's going to do this, that, and the other, and it's going to have a HEPA air system so people can breathe normally on the plane and not have to worry about disease, like something dumb like that. And the thing will just skyrocket on you. So please, moral of the story, don't trade earnings. Doesn't, it doesn't help you. It doesn't help you in any way. Okay. Let's go to Caterpillar. Caterpillar should be flossing. It seems like the economy is flossing. CCL needs to have a metaverse cruise. Then the stock will go to the moon. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. Uh, Caterpillar just keeps going. <clears throat> Earnings are the 25th, so you got about a month. So don't even worry about that right now. But again, if anybody is in Caterpillar, and Dalton, I actually think you're in Caterpillar. If you bought somewhere in here, fantastic job. And this would have been a great example for the video that I made recently. You run it up and you go sideways. And this thing has been going since December, let's call it December 6th. December 6th, and you're still in this thing with no reason to get out. Even with these big hiccups in here, you've had big price drops, but what has the trend told you? The trend has told you, don't exit. There's no reason to exit, no reason whatsoever. Even with this, even with the pullbacks, remember the trend is your friend. If you trust the trend, you're going to do very well. If you don't trust the trend, you're not gonna do very well. Why? Because you're going to leave a lot of profits on the table. You would have exited back in here. Well, you probably would have exited somewhere in, you probably would have exited here because um, you don't understand price movement doesn't dictate everything. At 286, you would have exited at 286 on this big gap down day after you made a couple dollars and you wouldn't be up to $359 a share. Or if you would have stayed in it, you would have exited somewhere in here at 314 and you wouldn't be up to $359 a share or, and beyond, actually, because this thing probably went to 365. Yeah. All right. Um, CCL needs AI in their earnings call. Touche. Steel horse. Steel horse, Tesla. TSLA. Tesla, Tesla. King Kronk. Actually, I like that one. All right. What are we looking for here with Tesla Steel? You give me your analysis and then I'll give you mine. How about that? You tell me what you want to do with Tesla because I'm not seeing a whole lot here. That's just me. All right. <clears throat> That's just me. Okay. Can I add some moving averages here? While I'm waiting for swing, you want to swing there? All right. Let's see what we got with a swing. Let me, eh, I want to get rid of that. Let's, let's get rid of that. All right, swing trade on Tesla. So we definitely have a reversal, right? We definitely have a reversal here. So let's do this, this reversed. I don't like that. For anybody that's been following me for, following me for any length of time, I don't like reversals in the sweet spot on swing trades. It shows me that there's weakness and confusion that's happening on the stock. Not a good thing, okay? Not a good thing either, no matter what direction you're going in long or short. You want consensus. You wanna ideally see, and let me move this back a little bit. You wanna ideally see this. Moves through, okay. Moves through the sweet spot up and then it comes down. And then it drops to the bottom and it moves up and it comes up and it drops. And you just wanna see this over and over. And of course, you're gonna have your red line and pretend this is red and it's gonna squiggle for you, right? It's gonna just move the other direction or be a little bit shorter. But that's what you wanna see. It's not what we're seeing here. Oh my God. <laughs> it's not what we're seeing here with. Um, Tesla right now, you're seeing confusion. And not only are you seeing confusion, but look here. You're seeing a lot of that same level. It's resistance support. Kind of an ugly face pattern if you want to draw in an ugly face. So be very careful swinging this. If anything, you want to swing it down. But I wouldn't swing this long right now, my friend. I wouldn't swing this long. You're going to get beat up. Auto Nation is, I think it's just AN, right? Yeah. And Auto Nation is a very interesting company. Um, let's see here. 
nothing long, nothing long term, especially because the stochastic is where it is. It's just. Here's what's interesting about AutoNation. Before before I look at any, I mean, this is really high. I wouldn't do this anything long. Don't worry about that. But look how many times you did reversions in the sweet spot in the last three months. One, two, three, three reversion. That's that's a lot of volatility. Even for me, that's not something I would want to trade. You can't get any kind of good, concise run like we just saw in Caterpillar or like you're going to see in the video when I talk about Costco. Costco moved for eight to nine months without any reversions in the sweet spot. I don't like seeing that on long-term charts. All right. Um, going short. Let's zoom out a little bit. It's going to be hard to short because you got to go through this. You got to go through this support level that's created right in here. It's going to be very hard for you. I actually just would not trade AutoNation. I would move on. Okay, Meta. Over $500 a share? Yep, of course it is. $508 a share. I told you guys it's just going to consolidate. It's not going to change. It does have a little bit of an ugly face pattern, but I wouldn't put too much weight on that. The ugly face pattern will probably pull back to right about here and get stuck and then move forward. Am I a Cincinnati Reds fan? No, I am not. I do not. Um, I don't really have a. I don't really have a preference of the Cincinnati Reds. I, if they didn't exist tomorrow, I really wouldn't care. All right. Um, let's see here. Do one. Let me see what if there's anything moving on my list here. Have you ever seen a stock like Meta that has powered through so many gaps? No, never. Never, never have I ever seen a stock like Meta that has gone through so many gaps. Not only that, but being the powerhouse company that it is. And it's absolutely immune to the, and so for those of you that don't know, I say gaps always fill. And when I say gaps always fill, it's easier for me to say gaps always fill then gaps fill like 90% of the time. And this is the exception to the rule. So when I say gaps always fill, take it with the take it take it for what it is, okay? Gaps, this is a gap right here. When you have big movement on a stock price, when you have big movement like this. So typically what you'll see is when you see something like this, when you see this big move up like that, and that's earnings. Anytime you see a gap, it's really gonna be earnings. You see that big move up. This is going to fill, okay? This is going to fill. Hey Dalton, can you text Paul and tell him that I'm on a live stream? This is going to fill, right? Well, also when you see something like this, this is going to fill. It's not filling though. When you get something like this, it's gonna fill. And why, why do we look for that? We look for that because, and let me change this color real quick. We look for that because we want to see, we know that this is going to move up and I want to be able to short it down to this level. And if this gaps up like this, I want to be able to short this down and to confidently that level. So I actually did, so if it moves up like this, I want to be able to short it down here like that. I actually did something recently. Well, not that recently. It was with a, a friend of mine and we went through and looked at when gaps happen, how often do they fill? And it was almost every single time, every single time a gap happened, they filled almost every single time. So we actually, what we did, and I don't implore anybody to do this. We were doing this as a test with, um, with paper money. We're basically seeing what kind of returns we can get if we just bought companies that gapped up on earnings. So if a company gapped up on earnings, we would, thank you. If a company gapped up on earnings, we would just short it. Didn't care about anything else. We would just short it. Or if a, cap, a company gapped down on earnings, we would just buy the company long and just let it go. And we actually made pretty good returns on it. I don't, it was a very short time window. So I don't know. It's not like I back tested this. We just did it in real time and saw what happened. And we actually made pretty good double digit returns on this. But Meta kind of threw, it was the one that threw everything off. Because if you put Meta in there and you say, 
all right, I'm gonna short, I'm gonna short this here at 189. Well, you're still losing until here. Okay, and then you wanna short this here at 273 or 237, you're still losing. You wanna short here at 488 or, four, or you call it 460, doesn't matter. You're still losing. It kind of <coughs> threw everything off. Meta is an outlier, man. Meta is an outlier and you're gonna have those. Outliers can smush returns, that's for sure. But great question, Hans. And I don't think that we've talked about gaps enough. Um, we focus on don't trade earnings, but we have not talked about gaps enough. Be very, very careful trading gaps, okay? Very careful trading gaps, all right? All right, let's go to the next one. Let's look at AMD. AMD, after the big report yesterday, actually turned into a downtrend, as you can see. The big report yesterday was that China was gonna get rid of them fell half a percent after falling pretty big in the morning. Um, be careful shorting this one, why? Same reason, there's your line. You need real engulfing, something, you need real engulfing to get through here, okay? Otherwise you're not gonna get through it. Um, weekly chart, can you do BAC? Yes. This is the weekly chart. Bank of America, kind of the same thing as JP Morgan. Enter here, let it run. As you get up into the sweet spot and move sideways, stock price continues to climb. Really good. I don't see anything. I don't see anything at all. If you wanna take profits, go for it. You don't really have to, honestly. You don't really have to. Uh, even here, guys, this is, the, this is the whole trusting the trend thing. Let it run up and don't exit until it drops below the 80% line. This didn't drop below the 80% line, it just kept going. So it looked a little iffy in here, but if you trusted the trend, you'd have made another, I mean, this went from 33 to $38 a share. So you'd have made another $5 a share. It's a pretty big percentage right there. So just trust your trend, trust your trend. You're not gonna be upset if you do that. Another lesson on Meta, let your winners run. I bought it at 90, sold at 190 because I thought the gap would fill. Yep, you're right. You're absolutely right about that. Let your winners run. Um, I think my cost basis on Meta is like two, 214, and I'm still letting it run. So uh, it's at 500. I mean, it's it's a it's a great move that's been going on. But don't the get if letting the winners run is really important. So Hans, you actually Hans usually comes in here and makes a lot of good jokes, but he's actually making a lot of good points today. Your jokes are falling on deaf ears, but your points are really good today um, about gaps. Fantastic. Let your winners run and make sure you don't fall for the gaps because unless you, and that's another thing, guys, I think that if Meta was one of my stocks that I watch religiously, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make, make the mistake of saying, okay, I'm going to let this one, I'm going to grab this one and try to do the opposite and try to let that gap fill. It's almost like, you just want you want to you want to learn your stock. You want to learn the stocks that you're trading, and that's this is a really good example of that. All right, I just, just don't want people here to f up like I did. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyone else? What other questions do you guys have? Let's look at Amazon real quick. Yeah, Amazon's hasn't after since its earnings report came out back February second. This thing has just been stuck and it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. If anybody actually is interested, not now, obviously, because of what I'm going to say, go to YouTube shorts and just type in Jeff Bezos. And he has so many, for, I watched a couple of them and now they're just in my YouTube shorts. And I, he, he has these little 30 second tidbits of just how he thinks about businesses and how he thinks about the world. He's a very intelligent guy, an amazing business that he built with, uh, with Amazon. Obviously everybody knows that, but it's very interesting to listen to him talk about how he ran meetings and how he thought about senior employees versus junior employees and how he thought about executives versus employees that have been in the company for a very long time and how he thought about sizing of meetings and, customer experience, et cetera. It was actually very, very interesting. Very interesting. All right. Um, let me pull up this. Uh, we hit Tesla, we hit Apple, we hit that. 
Oh, let's look at Bitcoin. I haven't looked at Bitcoin in a while. So Bitcoin is wavering. So while we're on this, let's go to gold. Jeff Bezos might be the best CEO of our time. Yeah, I think it's either uh, it's either him or Tim Cook. Now the difference is Bezos was incredible because he started that business and kind of ran it his way. That was the amazing part about Bezos. Um, I do think that Amazon would be in a better position now if he had not stepped down and get, given it to that Jassy guy. I think that the from a, an experience perspective of Amazon, I think that the consumer experience is declining. Um, that's just my take. The, cons- the customer experience, not consumer. Gold consolidating at the top. Let's go to KRE regional banks. Regional banks are consolidating as well. Um, I tossed QFIN average 14, 11 as value. I'm up 30%. Nice, nice. Let your winners run. All right, guys, <laughs> anything else? Any other questions that you have? On Thursday, I will be in the studio, in our home studio. I will be back in Ohio. So we will be, um, we'll hit that on Thursday. Whatever you guys want to talk about with QFIN, be careful here. You're facing two major resistance points, one there and one there. And guys, you can also, I've, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say this, $25 right now to join the Patreon. I am in there chatting. We are also going, oh, you know what? I just thought of something. The live stream on Thursday is actually going to be private. It's going to be private to our Patreon members. So $25 a month, join the Patreon. You'll get access to me. You'll get our private live streams. Um, I just thought of that right now. So private live stream on Thursday for just members. So if you have questions, come on in, join it. There's only 100 spots available at $25 a month. Then I'm going to increase the price. I wanted to make it um, kind of a no-brainer to start out and then move on from there. Okay, that is that. If you guys have any last questions, send them over. I have to go and record one other video. Oh, what about the, uh, what's that company that's doing the 50 to one stock split? Chipotle, right? CMG, they're doing a 50 to one stock split. Yes, you oracles will get it. You oracles will get it. Don't worry. All right, Chipotle, 50 to one stock split coming on June 26th. Okay, okay. All right. Interesting. This company amazes me. 57 ingredients, and they they do what they do. Absolutely amazes me. Absolutely amazes me. Okay. All right, guys. Any last questions? Any last questions? I'm scrolling up here to the top, just making sure I didn't miss anything. Don't want to miss anything. Hit PayPal, hit Carvana, hit Meta. Fisker Long. That was funny. Fisker Long. What is that? You know what? Before I log off here, how are we doing here? How's the greatest company since sliced bread doing? Oh, nice. It was at, <coughs> oh, okay. So Fisker, this is when um, people like Stock Mo were telling you to go and buy this. $22 a share back in November of 21. Today it's sitting at nine cents. So that was a pretty good, pretty good trade you had there. Uh, let's see what Rivion did. Rivion, this is when Stock Mo was telling you to go buy this thing. $180 a share today, it's sitting at 10 bucks. Creeping towards 11 though, so you might be okay. Let's see what Lucid's doing, LCID, yeah. Lucid, $65 a share today, it's sitting at $2.84, that's pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie, those are some pretty good returns, um, if you ask me. If you click on any of the videos, any of the videos that I have done, you will have the Patreon link in there. Um, if you let me, just give me a second here, I will do it. It should be on this video, but it doesn't look like it is, which is rather irritating, but that's okay. Let me copy this link, copy, and let me go back, and let me paste this here for you. Buy the dip. Yeah, buy the dip. Ah, all right. I don't know how to copy links. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Please, if you have any other questions, just message me. When you join the Patreon, please tag me. I will be right up there talking with you guys, and it's going to be a really fun journey. Thank you guys for being the foundation of everything. I will see you on Thursday morning, same time, different place, but really same place.